Hello and welcome to today's Super High tutorial. My name is Isabel and I'm a technical teacher at Super High. I'm going to be teaching you how to build an accordion feature using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. On this website, when we click on a question in this frequently asked questions page, you can see that the information expands. And when we click on another question, any open questions close to just display one question and answer at a time. So let's get started and dive right in. In my editor, I've already created a project where I've added some HTML and CSS. In my index.html file, we have an H1 element with our page title, which says frequently asked questions. Then for each question on the page, we have a section element that's acting as the parent container. Inside, we then have a div to show the questions open or close status in the form of this circle shape. And then we have the question itself in this H3 tag. And then we have the answer in this P tag. As you can see, the answer itself is in this div with the class of info, and both the question and the answer are in this container div. Now, if I scroll, you can see that this is the second question, are dogs colorblind? And then this one is the third question for what are the five senses that humans possess? Now, if I go over to my style.css file, I have imported this Google font called Poppins at the top, and I'm using the weights 400 and 700. Now in my body element, I've added some rules like the margin and padding to dictate the spacing. I've added in this font family so that we can use our Poppins sans serif font, and I've added the background color and the color of the text. I've also set some rules to style the H1, and for our section elements, I'm using this grid display rule so that we can neatly divide up the space between the circle shape and the question text. The line below each question is also being styled by the border bottom rule. Then for the H3 element, which is holding the question text, we've added a pointer cursor. This is so that the user knows they can click on this text when they hover over it. For the answer portion, We've set the default display to none so that when you first open the page, all the answers are hidden. Then when you change the sections class to opened, the display is gonna be set to block, which is going to make the answers appear. Now, if we go down to this status div, you can see that these are the rules for shaping this circle. So the width and the height are uniform, the background is transparent, and we have a nice blue border set as the default. When the corresponding section element is opened, then the circle div is going to fill in with this nice blue background. Now, before we even write any JavaScript code, let's do a quick overview of the steps that we have to implement. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to toggle just the first section on this page. Then we're going to refactor our code to toggle all the section elements on this page. And lastly, we're going to write some logic to only show one open section at a time. So the first thing that I'm going to do is in my script section, I'm going to create a new JavaScript file called accordion.js. And then in my index.html file at the very bottom, I'm going to create a new script tag and set the source or SRC to accordion.js so that they can talk to each other. Now, the first step that we're going to take inside our JavaScript file is that we need to identify the HTML element on the page. So we're going to start off by grabbing just the first section element. So I'm going to write const question, and then I'm going to use document.query selector. And the element that we're trying to find is the section. And I've saved it to this variable called question using const because this value isn't going to be reassigned in this project. Then we're going to add an event listener to that new variable that we just created. 
whoops, and it's going to be a click event listener because that's the kind of action that we're going to be taking on this element. And then inside the event listener, what we're going to do is we're going to toggle the class list for that question and the name of the class is going to be opened. So if I open up the console in Google Chrome, and let me just clear this out. If I select this section element, right now it doesn't have any classes on it, right? But if I click on it, you can see that it just added that opened class and the section actually opened to show us the answer. However, this functionality only works for that first question right now because document.querySelector is just grabbing the first section element on the page. And remember, when we take a look at our CSS file, the opened class is changing the display rule from none to block. And that's how we can display and hide that answer. We're also setting the opened class to the highest level parent container, which is the section element, to avoid toggling the class for several elements at the same time. It's much easier to target the parent element and then just write a few CSS rules specifically for its children, than to treat each child element separately. So for example, if we didn't want to just target the parent element, we would have to write a few more lines of code. First, we'd have to identify that status div. So I'm writing question.querySelector and then passing in div.status because we're just looking for the div.status inside the question element rather than the entire document. And then I'd have to toggle the class list for that specific element. And then I'd have to identify the answer element so I'm writing that query selector again, but this time I'm looking for div.info. And then I'd have to toggle the class list for that as well. So as you can see, just toggling the class list for the parent element is a lot easier. Now we're going to slightly refactor our code to apply this feature to all of the section elements on the page. So I'm going to comment out our existing code and instead I'm going to be using query selector all to identify all the section elements and save it to a variable. So I'm going to write const questions with a plural this time, I'm write query selector all and then pass in the section as the element that we're trying to identify. And don't be mistaken, this questions variable is going to be holding a node list and not an array. So we won't be able to call all of our typical array methods on it. If you're unfamiliar with what a node list is, let's console.log this questions variable and see what it returns. As you can see at the bottom here, it says node list three. And that means that there are three elements in our node list. If I hover over the first child, it highlights the first section element in the page. If I do the second one, it highlights the second one. And the third one highlights the third one on the page. So now we're going to iterate over this node list. Because we can't use our typical array methods on this, what I'm going to write is a for each statement. And the individual element that we're going to be iterating over, I'm going to call it a question. And then for each question element, I'm going to be adding back in an event listener for a click event. And then I'm going to be toggling that class list for opened. Now, if I click on each question, it's going to open and hide each one. We're so close to finishing this functionality. And the last thing that we're going to do is write some logic so that only one question shows at a time. Now, in order to write the logic to only show one answer at a time, we're going to slightly change the code that we have in our for each function. So I'm going to comment out lines 11 to 13. And we're going to start off by creating a new variable with const to grab just the question text or the h3 element in each section. So I'm going to write const opener 
equals question dot query selector and then pass in h3. Now the reason that we're writing question and not document is because we want to specifically target the h3 element inside the section element rather than the first h3 element in the entire document. So if we did document, it would only grab one h3 element. Now we're then going to add a click event listener to this opener variable. So I'm going to write opener dot event, oops, add event listener, and then click, write this as a callback function. And then inside the event listener, we're going to use the array dot from method to turn the section node list into an array. And this is so that we can actually call the filter method on it, which is an array method. So now there are two ways we can write this. We can either write array dot from with a capital A and pass in the questions variable, or we can use the spread element, which is different from the spread operator with these three dots and basically write a shorthand version of line 17. Now the spread syntax can be used when all the elements from an object or array need to be included in a list of some kind. So we're gonna go ahead and use that shorthand syntax. So I'm gonna delete line 17, and then we're gonna call the filter function on this new array. And if you're not familiar with the filter array method, it's a function that takes in a condition and returns a new array with just the items that pass that condition. So we're gonna use this to exclude any H3 elements that match the current element that's being processed in the array. So I'm going to write Q to represent the current item that's being processed in the filter method. And then the condition that I'm gonna write is that Q cannot equal question, which if you remember is the current item being processed in this for each statement. Now we're using this strict inequality operator. It has two equal signs rather than one. When we have just one equal sign, it's called just the regular inequality operator. And the problem with using just the regular inequality operator is that it's going to try to convert the objects being compared to be the same data type. Therefore, if we compare, let's say, the number three, oops, the number three and a string that had a value of three in it, it would actually evaluate to true when in fact their data type is different, right? So if we use the strict inequality operator, this statement would then evaluate to false. So the strict inequality operator just gives us a more clear cut evaluation because it doesn't convert the object's data type. Then we're going to call a for each function on that new filtered list. So then I'm going to write dot for each. And then the individual element that's being processed, I'm also going to call it Q. And then we're just going to remove the opened class from that element. So I'm going to write Q dot class list dot remove and then pass in the string opened, thereby closing all the sections that are not the current one. And finally, we're going to add the opened class to the current question. So I'm gonna write question dot class list dot toggle, and then pass in opened. Now, when we click on a question, the other questions also close. And that's how you can build this accordion style feature using just JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all of our tutorials. Thanks for watching.